Hello and welcome to Fridays with Brandon. Welcome to the channel. Today we are filming episode number 53 of Fluke Fridays and happy and welcome, happy Friday. I hope you guys are doing well and you're ready for the weekend. Today what we're going to be going over is a Fluke 709H. This is a loop calibrator that also has the ability to, tar to talk heart communication. This is not a full-blown communicator, but at a quarter of the price of a lot of the commun uh, communicators on the market, or less than a quarter of the price, uh, you can put a lot more of these into people's hands, and we're going to kind of go through some of the features of why somebody might want to do this, because if all you're doing is trimming or setting upper and lower limits, you don't need a full-blown communicator to do that, and this might be the right solution to give to more of your technicians within a chemical plant or any of your plants where you don't really need full-blown uh, commissioning capability, but you just need to adjust. So if you're doing more of adjustments of heart sensors, this could be the right tool for you. So we're going to go over that and then we're going to go over, uh, I only have one question, it actually came in last week, but it took me a while to really get a good enough answer to feel like I could give to you. Um, but I didn't get many questions this week, so make sure you leave your questions below because I'm going to add that at the end of these videos so that you get a little bit of Q&A from what you guys really care about. So let's jump into the 709H and talk about it. So this is the 709H, the uh, Precision Heart Loop Calibrator. So it has heart capabilities because that's why it has an H at the end of it. You'll also get this kind of capability with the 710, the valve, I think it's valve, um, valve tester. It has the heart communication as well. So everything you see in this, plus some valve options for the 710. So that might be something you want to check out as well. And they look the exact same other than one has a 710 versus a 709H. So let's take this and let's turn it on. With a, with a loop calibrator, the main thing you're going to be doing with something like this is going to be measuring or sourcing or simulating uh, 0 to 4, uh, 0 to 4, mi not, not 0 to 4, sorry, 4 to 20 milliamps. And it has the ability to do a 250 ohm resistor and all that good jazz. And do a power supply, 24 loop power supply. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this heart um, puck over here, a little 644 temperature puck, plug in. I'm going to go into our menu and I am going to say heart communication menu. Okay. And we're going to supply because it's on the bench we're going to supply the 24 loop power and um, milliamp and we've got the 250 ohm resistor on if you had that exterior you could obviously turn that one off we hit this and it's going to go searching it found one device we know there's no more so we're just going to hit the knob and skip look this one's named after me be good brandon good and it's acquiring the data so display setup data, if you want to look through everything that's set up, and what this thing can offer, you can do that. I'm going to scroll through this. You guys feel free to take a gander at all of these different parameters. You can see what we currently have, the upper and lower limit. I just kind of mess with the lower um, limit, um, the lower limit value earlier, and I put it at one. I'm going to change that back to zero during this, during this video, and it goes up to... 150. You can see all of the stuff you can see um, from the heart data on this device. So I'm going to keep clicking through here. You guys can go back and pause the video if I'm going too fast for anything. And I'm trying to think if we are almost to the end. I think we're getting very close. And that is it. Okay. I'm going to exit that. Go back to the heart display menu. Um, we're going to, let's turn a backlight on, huh? here we go, modify setup. So if you wanted to change either the lower limit or the upper limit, or write the PV val uh, unit, you can do that. So we're going to click this. Yes, we know it's going to mess up the system if it's still on, but it's not. So I'm going to click, click, bring this back down to zero. And you can see it says press and hold to write, so I'm going to hold this and sending data. Okay, so we did that. Change that limit. If you wanted to 
change it from Fahrenheit to Kelvin or something else, you could do that. Okay. And modify the tag. If you want to rename it, you can do that as well. Okay. Now you get to your trim set and zero. So if you want to trim upper and lower limits, um, you can do all of that here or PV zero. Okay. Device diagnostics. I'm not really 100% sure what all that does, um, but self-test, press knob to test. I'm not going to do it right now. And data log and config log. So you can do all this. Okay, so that's kind of the heart side of it. Obviously, back to the main menu, you can see source milliamps, simulate milliamps, measure milliamps, source milliamp or measure milliamps with a 250 or 24 volt source and voltage measurements okay so i hope that that's beneficial again this is about a quarter of the price of a full-blown uh, communicator that you're going to need more for commissioning but it can put a lot of uh, useful heart communicating tools in a lot of your technicians for a lower price point so hopefully that's helpful Next, we are going to go through a question that came in last week, and I got the answer now. So from Arash Zergon, it says, why is the response speed to calibrator or to capacitor measurements in fluke meters much faster than other multimeters on the market? What is the reason for the accuracy and measurement of super fast fluke capac uh, super fast fluke capacitors. Okay, so I had to do some digging, ask some um, some fellow sellers, some old dogs I like to call them um, that have been around a while, and you know we don't know all the ins and outs, but we're going to give you some theories of kind of what, what we think. We know how capacitance is measured, so we're gonna start with that, and then I'll tell you kind of how a meter maybe could do this, but again, we didn't talk with engineers. We're not gonna give any proprietary information from Fluke. This is just based on a couple guys theorizing. So, if you look at this calculation, this is how you would calculate capacitance. So capacitance, what we're gonna be measuring is right here. And so we have Test current equals capacitance times delta V over delta T. So delta V being the change in voltage and delta T being the change over time. And what ends up happening is we the, the meter will then source current and then it will measure voltage at one point and then wait a little bit and measure voltage again a little bit later and based on that that's how it calculates uh, that's how it's going to calculate your capacitance now how could you do it faster well if you gave it more current it would make the whole process go faster that's one way or if you um, but that could maybe reduce battery life so maybe they do a pulse current we're not really sure but those are some of the theories of how this could happen um, but I'm glad to hear that it is working faster than other meters on the market and still accurate for you. I hope that um, this helps other people kind of give some insight. I don't know if this was a lot more technical than even I was real comfortable with, but I hope that's helping you guys. Let us know if you like this. If you have other questions, whether technical or not as technical, leave them below. We'll use those in the future because if you have the question, somebody else probably does too. Thanks. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Take care.